Tales from Fright Town, Part 1, by Brian Holt. Hello, my name is Jonas Black, and I recently started to write a journal about my town, and I think you might be interested in some of the things that have happened so far. Before I tell you about my journal, it might be a good idea to tell you a little bit about my weird town at the edge of the world. The reason that I say it's at the edge of the world is because no one ever seems to know about it the moment you leave it. That is, unless they're from there, of course. People rarely move to town either. The only reason people ever do, as far as I know, is because they don't have any other options. The only people I know that have moved here are some new people, Mark, Amy, and Claudia. Things around here have always been weird, or at least I think it always has. Like I said, I grew up in this town with my family of four and my childhood friend Eric. Eric is a lot like me, weirdly disturbed by the way our town is. He lives in the center of town, or as we locals call it, the normal part, even though there's nothing normal about it. Eric once told me that he got jumped on his way home. I was walking past the park when a group of people came charging out of the forest, he stated. They had a weird mask on. It almost looked like they were made out of animal remains. They ran up to me and pushed me to the ground. Four of them kept my hands and legs down while a fifth guy took out some sort of ritual knife. Before the man could stab me, I guess, his head exploded. The four other people ran off back into the forest, and I looked behind me and I saw old man Logan with his rifle. Now, a bit of explanation. That's not his real name, but everybody calls him that anyway. Eric continued. He gave me an angry, yet sad look before he said something like, Don't worry, I'll handle them. Before marching off into the forest, after that I got up and ran home. I'm not sure how credible his story is, but I believe him, mostly because I have my own experiences with this town. Like I said, the town is weird, and the people that live in it are even weirder. What I'm trying to say is that I have seen horrific deaths and stupidity beyond what I thought was humanly possible my whole life. And uh, I guess I've gotten used to it. The only real things that still freak me out are the tunnels and the reason that I started writing my journal. I started to write my journal about a month ago, after what happened at the kiosk. So I think I'll just start with my first entry. Eric and I were on our way to the kiosk at the edge of town. The kiosk is the only place that sells chips, energy drinks, and other normal food in the entire town. It's pretty much the only place I shop at, plus it's a pretty nice place to just hang out. When we got to the store, we saw one of the more known meth heads sitting slumped up against the wall. I wouldn't go in there if I were you, he said. There are three outsiders in there. And we all know how Earl feels about them. He was right. We all knew how Earl feels about new people, especially if they're from out of town. I gave him a nod and said, Well, that's great, before walking right past him and straight into the store. Earl is the owner of the kiosk, and he's also the only employee. So most of the time, he's grumpy or angry. He had never really liked new people since he's convinced that they are spies from the government. The first thing I heard when I entered was something along the lines of, I don't care that you don't want to get shot. Things are tough and I can't afford to fire off warning shots. It was Earl. He was holding his revolver and aiming it at three people. One of the people, a girl that I later learned was named Claudia, gave me a worried look and said, What is going on? I walked past them, straight over to the shelf that contained chips, and Eric followed me. After a short, awkward minute, I decided to get a pack of off-brand Pringles. Then I walked over to the counter and looked at Earl. He was still holding his gun. Hey, Earl, I said. Can you stop aiming at me? He slowly started to lower his gun after making intense eye contact with me. While he did that, I signaled behind my back to the three people that they should leave the store. I don't know if they saw that I was trying to signal them to leave, but they left in a hurry. I turned to Eric and said in a somewhat whispery voice, Hey, I'll pay for this stuff. If you can go and explain to them about the town and maybe get them to drop off calling the cops. Eric nodded a yes and he handed me his stuff and power walked out of the store. I turned back to Earl 
and he was still keeping a finger on his gun. So, Earl, how are things? I asked him. Did anything special happen? He gave me the usual tired look before answering. Well, things are hard these days, he started. After the last employee died, I've been the only one working, and then all of the sudden new folks come in and start asking about the thing in the sewer. After he finished talking, I paid him and asked if I could use the toilet before leaving, and he said, go ahead. I went through the door beside the slushy machine into the storage room. There were two doors in there, one that leads to the backyard that contains all the dumpsters and the second one that leads to the employee bathroom. I went over to the bathroom door and grabbed the doorknob. Now, this next part happens over the duration of about 10 seconds, but I'll try to describe it as detailed as I can. I'm sorry in advance. I opened the door and I saw a man. The man was standing by the toilet with his back to me, so I thought that he was peeing. Uh, sorry, man, I didn't know that someone... But before I could finish my sentence, the man turned around and his eyes were filled with terror. He took a small step towards me. Help me, he said with pain in his voice. With what? What's wrong? I said. He started to answer, but before he could get another word out, he fell to his knees and grabbed his stomach. Blood started to pour through his shirt, around the belly button. He threw his arms back and started to scream. The blood started to spread upwards. The bottom of the shirt started to tear apart, and after a second, his chest was completely naked. There was a small cut from his belly button up to his throat. He started to lean back, but only with his upper body, almost as if his legs were stuck in place. As he fell backwards, the cut started to tear open with the sound of pure pain. His organs started to spill out onto the floor, and the sound of breaking bones filled the air. There was blood everywhere, even some of it on my face. Suddenly, I heard footsteps moving towards me, fast. I looked to my left and I saw Earl entering the room. He gave me a quick look and then looked at the body before saying, get a shovel. I'm going to need your help. We went out the back with the shovels and we dug a hole and buried the body of the man there. Earl explained that people had started to suddenly get ripped open in thin air. And since he didn't want to get the police involved, he had decided to bury them himself. Nobody's reported them missing. So I guess it's just one of those weird things that happens. He told me. Earl offered me a job as a new employee with a higher level of pay to keep my mouth shut, even though I wouldn't say anything anyway. After that, I went home. Well, I have to leave now, but don't worry, I have a lot more stories to tell, so I'll post again soon when I have some time.